In this video, I'll be introducing sheaves and pre-sheaves in the realm of category theory. Now, this is heavily related to it in topology, although that's not what I'm covering today. I'm covering it in category theory, and the category prerequisites you're going to need for this wrap it up are going to be knowledge of the opposite category for a category and knowledge of functors, uh, both contravariant and covariant functors. You need to know a little bit about both of those. All right, so the first definition is of a pre-sheaf. Now what a pre-sheaf is, is it's basically the simplest thing ever created, is it's a functor from the opposite category into the category of sets, which like that is literally the two things you need to know. Now this obviously corresponds with a contravariant functor from the category into the category of sets, where instead of doing uh, the functor applied to an arrow from A to B, you do the functor applied to the opposite arrow applied from B to A. And it's just, the, it's just a correspondence. It's very simple how this is going to turn into a contravariant functor. So the category of pre-sheaves is quite trivially from this definition is going to be the functor category between the opposite category and the category of sets. That's literally the definition. All right, well, the next definition is a little bit more complicated, and it's of a site. And what a site is, is it's a pair, C, a category, and J, a coverage. Now, what a coverage is, is it's an assignment where we take every single object so say A, an object of C, and it'll assign it to a what is known as a covering family, which is just a collection of morphisms, Fi, which take you from an object Ai into the object in question, which is A. And this is for I an element of some index set. So it's just some collection of indexed morphisms from indexed objects into whatever the covered object is. All right, the second property is relating to these covering families is that for every single one of these covering families, from fi from ai through a for i element i, and for every single morphism g for some object b into the object a, which is the object being covered by this covering family. So this is just some other object we selected, and this is just some arbitrary morphism. And if we have these two things, that means that there is a new covering family, which is, I'll do HJ, which will take you from BJ into B, which is the same object B as there, for J an element of I, such that there exists a map K, which I'll index IJ, which is going to be from bj into ai. So you can see how the indices line up there. So there's this covering family on b, and there's this covering family on f. And so let's just write out a commutative diagram using all of these morphisms. So using the covering family on b, we'll have a morphism from bj down to b via hj. And then via this covering family on a, we'll have a morphism from AI down to A via the covering map FI. And then by the fact we have this morphism from A to B, we'll have that arrow via G. And then by the fact we have this map, we have KIJ right there. And this is a commutative diagram, and that's just to make everything work out nicely. So we make this diagram commute, then we have the fact that this is a site. So the notion of a site is basically that we can transfer between two covering families, which are just collections of morphisms into that object. The next definition is of a matching family. Basically for a matching family, you need to have a pre-sheaf F on a category C and a site on the category C. So we have this site and this category and a pre-sheaf. Now, we, what we do is we pick out a covering family from J. We just pick a specific example, so say Fi 
from a i into a for i and element of i. So what a matching family is, subordinate to this functor, this pre-sheaf, and this matching family is it's a collection of objects s i, and this is for the same i's, i and element of i, and we have it that s i is an element of the set of the functor applied to a i. Because remember, it's a pre-sheaf, and a pre-sheaf is a functor from the opposite category, whose objects is just the objects of C, into the category of sets. And so, therefore, this is a set, and SI is just an element of that set. Now, what I'm going to do is just draw out some an intuitive diagram, which is that we have AI and we have AJ, and I'm going to bring AI down to A via FI from the covering family, and I'm going to bring AJ down to A via some math FJ. And now to complete this diagram so that we can actually use it to define uh, what a matching family is, I'm just going to add in another object B. And two more morphisms, one taking B down to AI, and another one taking it via H down to AJ. And this is just so we have a complete diagram. And now, if this diagram commutes, so it does not necessarily have to commute, but if it does, then we'll have a nice property. What would the property want to be? Well, let's just use the minimal amount of information as possible. We can do the, the pre-sheaf, and we can apply it onto one of these morphisms, right? Well, because we have G, it's a morphism from B into AI. Well, because it's a contravariant functor, I can apply F to G, and it's now going to be from F of AI into F of B. Well, look at that, F of AI, SI is an element of that. And so now I can apply this function, because it's in the realm of sets, and I can apply that on SI by the definition. And now I can do the same exact thing with H. So I can do F of H, and I can apply it to SJ. So this is a matching family corresponding with this functor well, you better believe that it has some nice properties. And because this is sort of like the thing that we wanted to do with this diagram, how about we just set them equal? What it's allowing us to relate these two functors going into the domains of these covering morphisms via this functor. Once we apply this functor, like usually you'd have no clue what the relation between those two would be. However, now that we have this matching family, it allows us to transfer between it in a very organized and fashionable way. A matching family is just allowing us to transfer between any two morphisms going into two different of the domains for these covering morphisms. It allows us to transfer between two of those morphisms using the matching family well, now the definition of a sheaf is pretty simple after this. In that, the definition of a sheaf is just a pre-sheaf, and uh, the category has a site. And we have it that for every single covering family fi from ai into a, for i and element of i, and a matching family corresponding to it under this functor, so this functor is the one we used in this definition, then if we have both of these, then there exists a unique element S of F of A such that F applied onto FI, now let's think about this, this is a contravariant functor, Fi is originally from Ai into A, and so contravariant means that it flips those, so it's F of A into F of Ai. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, if it's going from F of A, we can use S. Oh, but if it's going into F of Ai, we can use the matching family Si. And that's, that's all it, a sheaf is that if you have a covering family and a matching family,
there is some element which generates the the matching family which is such a nice property right it just makes matching families all the more useful now that we can generate it only using the covering family okay let's just recap Prishi functor from the opposite category into the category of sets a site is just uh, it's just a site is just covering families of morphisms from some object into the object in question such that they are able to be transferred between and a matching family uh, via a functor and a, co a covering family is just a collection of objects which has nice properties for maps into the matching family domains. So for, for each of these AIs and AJs, and we have functors into those, they are preserved via this matching family and this functor. And then a sheaf just generates the matching family. And that's it.